Okay, this is the beginning of my first amp project, building it from scratch. All the instructions are in this book, the Guitar Amp Handbook, um, by Dave Hunter. And it's basically, well, it's called the Two Stroke Amp, and it's a cool little amp. It's, uh, it's like a, well, it's convertible. You can change it from a Princeton to a Champ. You can run any type of uh, 6L6 or 5881 tube or 6V6. Um, let's see what else can you run in there. Oh, an EL34. And it's a single-ended Class A amp, which I don't have any of. All the ones I have are two uh, power tube push-pull AB amps, AB class. First thing I'm gonna do today, and I'll, uh, you guys will get to witness it. This is a chassis off of a, I think a Champ style amp. It's actually a kit that you get from Andy Swanson. I think of the tube, the tube network. Uh, you can order the kit from him. It's about four hundred dollars just for the chassis and all the parts. Here's the circuit board. I've already pre-soldered most of the stuff. I got a 40 microfarad uh, Sprig Adams as the main filter. Mostly carbon film resistors. I stuck a little carbon comp resistors in there for uh, warmth. But not much to it. It's a little circuit board. It has an impedance switch so I will have to Drill a hole in the chassis. This is so I can switch the amp from 8 ohm to 4 ohm, which is great because then I can use one or two speakers. And it's pretty surprising how simple these single ended amps are. I mean, just amps in general, point to point. I mean, look, there's not that many circuits there. I mean, components there to solder together. And then uh, here's the this is a Mojo 760 power transformer and this is a Hammond 12 uh, 125 ESC. These wires is the green wires. These provide the 6.3 volts for the heater filaments on the tubes. The yellow wires provide the 5 volt for the rectifier heater these, uh, well, you, this is where you, the black wires are where the 120 uh, AC home voltage comes in, and then the red wires are where the 330 volts of AC comes out. That's what that's what the power transformer does, the 120 to 330, and then this goes into the rectifier tube, and that turns it into DC voltage. After you pre solder all the components so that it's easy to assemble. Here are the pots. I've already put those together. And this comes with ceramic uh, tube sockets, grommets. Uh, the other cool thing about this amp, and this is one of the features of the two-stroke, is it's got this little switch which is uh, changes the bias on the preamp tube, the 12AX7, so you have a fat boost and uh, a treble boost, uh, and so it's got some features that champs don't have. Okay, I've twisted these uh, 6.3 volt heater supply wires that go to the to the uh, jewel light and then they go from the light to the heaters of the 6v6 or the two you know the eight pin socket over here I put one socket in that's one thing the kit gives you an option of using bolts or screws I, I always like the screws since that's what Fender used the sheet metal screws I actually bought these at Radio Shack they're hard to find anywhere else but they have an assortment pack that's was perfect for this so they screw in there really good uh, all I've got left to do now is cut the 
black wires, which is where the AC comes into the power transformer. One goes to this side of the power switch. You can see that's the power switch. And then the other black wire goes to the fuse holder down here, this tab right down at the bottom. So I'll do that. I'm going to take everything out. And the next thing you'll see me trying to drill a hole right here for the impedance switch. Another speaker jack. Actually right there, I think. This is a uh, unibit. Goes all the way to half inch size. I need to go all the way through the chassis with this thing. You get these at Home Depot. Great little tool for different size holes. It went through my uh, Cryberry, Cryberry, Crybaby chassis like butter. We'll see what it does with steel. I hope this works because I need to drill a couple of holes. Shoot, I can't see very good. for the extra input jack for the extra speaker. This one's a little bit tighter fitting, so this is going to be a little, a little hairy. I don't want to mess this thing up. Okay, well, I put my rubber grommets in the holes where the output transformer wires will feed through from back here. I had to drill this hole, this extra hole, just so the wires would go to the impedance switch. I also had to drill these two holes for the circuit board mounting screws. So you, with this chassis, it's not specifically for this kit. It was the best chassis they could find. So if you do buy the kit, plan on drilling some extra holes actually. Uh, the output transformer, I'm not sure how it's going to fit with when I get it in the cabinet with the speakers. So I've got a few extra holes. Actually, I drilled these two. These were already here, but they don't match up with the output transformer. So I had to drill a couple extra holes so I can swivel this thing back and forth wherever I need it, just in case it doesn't fit good in the cabinet. But that's all I've done so far. Okay, now I've, I've mounted this monster output transformer, as you can see. And I've fed the wires through that far grommet. These are extra different ohms. Wrap these up and just save them for later. If somebody wants to go with a different speaker cabinet, they can change these wires. Uh, but these won't be used, just the yellow and white. Go through there connect to this big impedance switch left and right and in the center will go to 
to the speaker jacks. This is the negative lead for the ground on the speaker jacks from the output transformer. And that's where I am right now. Okay, I've got all my output transformer wires cut. This goes to the speaker jack. This goes to the board and the uh, six or the power tube socket. <clears throat> One thing I missed in the book somewhere, and I'm going back to try to find out where it is, is there's some wires on the back that need to be connected to these eyelets. This is the shielded cable that goes straight to the grid of the 12AX7 which is where your guitar signal goes and so it's shielded this goes to the 6V6 there's one other wire that I need to connect back here if you notice I've got a line of leads over here it's all from the capacitors the main filter capacitors they're all connected together and going out and I left this one long lead here off of the main 40 microfarad that is going to go in here and it's going to connect to that ground terminal that's going to be connected to that bolt right there you can see on the power transformer that'll ground all of these instead of grounding them to the uh, brass plate which the kit doesn't come with the brass plate you can buy one if you want to but I don't know if I don't think it's necessary they say it's not necessary so I'm just going to ground it to this one terminal over here. Well, I said I was going to milk this because it, I, I enjoy it so much. But uh, shoot, after a day, got to leave and go to a wedding here pretty soon. But after a day, I'm just about done. I've got all the wires prepped. You can see that's the nine-pin socket. Uh, got everything pretty much done uh, all the wires are in there all I have to do is make the final connections and that's that's about it so uh, I mean it's not as easy as I may have made it look but uh, if you have any kind of you know hobby building or model building experience you know it shouldn't be that hard you need some special tools like that unibit and a Dremel, I highly recommend having a Dremel so you can uh, smooth out your holes that you drill and grind anything, but uh, it's looking pretty good. Circuit board, got the wires on the back there. All I have to do now is prep all these wires, tin them with solder, and get everything ready. All right, today I should be able to get this thing all put together. I'm slowly attaching wires to the circuit board. I got to put the output transformer back in and solder all those. Put all the jacks in. Uh, so hopefully I can finish this. When they say you can do this in a weekend, if you spend you know eight hours a day. Friday, Saturday, you should be able to get it done if you have all the tools. Uh, one thing I suggest is when they tell you to cut these wires and tin them and get them ready, kind of label them so you don't get them lost because after a while you end up with a whole bunch of cut wires and I'm having a hard time figuring out which ones went where. So yeah, it is a good idea to keep real organized with these small pieces of wire because they're a lot of them are pretty close in length. But you've got spare wire. If something happens, you can always cut another one. But it's just nice to keep it in order. Okay, I'll be back when I get more of it put together.